We're back, boys. We are so back. Yeah, sunglasses. I was wearing them in the fridge trying to do this fucking fridge talk. Uh, and when I got on, I was like, guys, I can't do fridge talks. It's not that I can't do them. You know, the fridge just starts beeping at me. The lights dim, like when you're about, you know, when you're supposed to leave the bar and it messes up the whole vibe. Um, same thing in the fridge. So I propose you guys get me like uh, a sponsorship with some sort of refrigeration company and we get an old refrigerator like you know a unit that i can climb into it only has to appear cold little little inside scoop for you listeners um and i can sit down and have a comfortable space to fucking do what is essentially like a monologue for three minutes Every primetime game, as soon it looms over me, man, the whole game, I'm like fuck fridge talk. What do I, what do I got to talk about on the fucking fridge talk? And then it ruins the end of the game because you're scribbling notes. We need to get uh, one of those industrial fridges, you know, the walk in at restaurants where like you get the meat slabs. That's exactly what I'm up. saying, dude. We need to put, yeah, we put the fucking meat slabs in there, whatever you got to do. But I need a place to walk into as soon as the primetime game ends. And we can actually kill two birds with one stone here. We can do the podcast, which is what you're listening to right now. And we can do the fridge talk. And then the fridge talk becomes its own YouTube thing. You, you hear this shit? Consumers? One-stop shop, you could say. Yeah, you could say that. Man, that was a one-stop shop for anything you wanted to see tonight. Except for like the Ravens passing attack, just looking in sync. I mean, I suppose like people lining up on sides. I, I'm not, I, this isn't a, this isn't a, like a hit job I'm about to do. I don't know where to start. Let's start with the, the worthy reverse. I mean, I don't want to get out over my skis here, fellas. No peekaboo street. Is that accurate, Reed? Yeah, you know, hey. My life flashed before my eyes there. That man's fast. They they had the Kansas City Chiefs have an individual on their offense that appeared to be like a small car yep. on the on the football field. And I know there's people that are like, oh, it's just a reverse. But no, it's not just a reverse. And I'm gonna tell you why. It's not just about, oh, they can run a reverse with a fucking fast guy. It's not just about, oh, they executed a play. It's about like, I will always remember where I was when I saw Xavier Worthy run across the screen, whether his career turns out well or not. I don't like when he got the ball, I was like, here we go. And I'm expecting to be disappointed. I'm expecting Baltimore to knock that play down for a three yard gain. <laughs> and holy shit, dudes look drunk. His, hey, his, his speed was palpable. Uh, dude, it was like the whole stadium was like, my dad tells a story about when Bo Jackson ran like for a long touchdown at one of the games and he heard the stadium gasp. Yeah, the one man reverse. The one man reverse. And I'm like, that was me tonight. I remember where I was when Tyson bit Holyfield's ear. I remember where I was when Luis Gonzalez hit the ball up the middle. I, I remember where I was when... Fuck, I remember the, the helmet catch, and I remember tonight. I was sitting on my couch, and uh, you say it's just the reverse, or I'm just like overreacting. I'm just going to tell you, my reaction was probably reciprocated everywhere in the NFL. That's what y'all don't understand is it's not just about being able, oh, they can run a reverse now. It's holy shit, that guy's just as fast as we thought he was. And that changes things. They haven't had a guy that fast since Tyreek. And this guy probably, I don't know if he's faster. I don't want to get in the middle of the whole Noah Lyles, Tyreek, and now Xavier Worthy thing. But I'll just say this. It just affects the way you prepare for this team. That, that to me is like, you show all you had to do is show me what's in the arsenal. Like a little hint of it. And yeah, the other one was either blown coverage, miscommunication, and you know, Kansas City kind of got some breaks with the calls, I suppose. But that team's better than the team in white. 
the team in white has a lot more to prove. The team in white came in with more to prove. And I'm a huge fan of Lamar. He's a fucking MVP. Some of the, the commentary on him is outrageous. The negative stuff. He didn't play his best game. But ironically, he was the fucking only reason they were in it. Right. And that's the, that's the, that's the thing that's so frustrating about this team because, listen, I knew Kansas City got better offensively. You know, I did not think Baltimore got better almost anywhere. And, yeah, they lost two key guys on defense. But I look at Baltimore, and it was confirmed tonight. Now, hey, listen, they might just not have been ready to play. That, that's a team that's made playoff runs, short runs, but, like, they've made playoff runs. they, they got a Super Bowl-winning head coach, MVP quarterback, tremendous amount of respect for that organization. All I'm saying is tonight they weren't ready to play. And they also have real things that they have to fix. And it doesn't make it any easier when you go on the road to play a fucking arrowhead. You get juices flowing. It's the first game. You're on the bus to the stadium, and you want to explode. Like, you're on the bus. This I'm in the hotel. The schedule's fucked up. We are creatures of habit. It's fucking Thursday, and we're zero and zero. What's weirder than taking a flight on a Wednesday to a football game, sitting in your hotel all day long, just the tension building up. You get to the stadium. It's a fucking rain, rain delay. That's not, that's not insignificant, you know, and it's not insignificant because I can't understate this, and I love that stadium. It is a work of art. I hope they never tear it down, and if they ever put a roof over it or move the stadium, I'll fucking protest the franchise. I'll never bet the Chiefs again. But that locker room that the visitors are forced to use there, it should be illegal. I mean, there are better appointed high school locker rooms, and they know that, and that's okay. I'm not being a diva. I, I love the place. I would rather play there 10 out of 10 times than the new Levi's Stadium. You know, and I'm just comparing that because that's what replaced Candlestick. That locker room is cramped, man. And I actually played in a preseason game where we were delayed three hours, something like that, for a preseason game. Even if it's 20 minutes, it throws guys off. And you could tell they weren't ready to play. And on top of that, you got Zach Orr, who I don't want to take anything off the guy. I think it's a fucking amazing feat to get a coordinator job at that age in the NFL. And I love that former players are getting him. But he is walking into Arrowhead. And on the other sideline, the guy he's playing chess with is Andy Reid. And... I thought at a lot of turns tonight, although he, he didn't do a bad job, there were some tough matchups. You can see on the field that their linebacker core is way different. You know, like, uh, no, what's the guy, 40's name? I texted you as soon as I was like. Malik Harrison. Yeah, Malik Harrison. It, and he might be a good player, but the way they exploited him in space, even Roquan Smith, who Roquan Smith is like is like modern day – Dick Buckus to me, dude. Right. Like, but I just mean in, in a sense of badassery and just being an awesome football player. But I wouldn't want him on Rasheed Rice. Right. You know what I mean? And so there were certain instances where I just thought. And that that was over and over. Yeah. Like, they just kept getting that matchup. And it's just over the whole course of the game, you're, you're just scratching your head. Well, one thing you said was like, you know, the safeties, they're, they're back there. And so, and you want to also, you want to know what I'm saying about this reverse. It's not just the reverse. The reverse is a symptom of something. It's, it's like, that's also something they took note of in preparation for the game. And once the game started was, holy shit, this team is a lot faster than they were (laughs) fucking, you know, nine months ago. And that's why I like the chiefs coming in because they went to M and T and beat those guys. And this team might be better than last year's team in a strange way. The thing yep. about the Chiefs and any great team, Noel, and Cowboy, and we talk about this like with the Patriots, they change year to year. Sometimes the defense with certain franchises can be dominant like last year. And then sometimes you got to outscore people. And, you know, the whole time last year, if it were the offense playing awesome and the defense struggling, you'd be like, Patrick Mahomes can outscore him. You wouldn't have panicked. 
you just might have the inverse of that at times this year. I don't think Baltimore was the right team to exploit it. Right. You know, you bring in Derrick Henry, fucking you pay him $8 million. $8 million. What'd you say? Um, what could they have gotten? Yeah, from? I mean, I, I just looked at a few different uh, same cost options. So you're paying Henry $8 mil a year on a per year basis. You could have taken that and brought in Curtis Samuel to have another receiver option. Or you can go um, take maybe five mil of that, sign Devin Singletary if you really want it back, and then draft, instead of Nate Wiggins, any of Pearsaw, Leggett, um, McConkey, Keon Coleman, yeah. all of who would be around three mil. Um, they just the, – the 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 lack of upgrades at receiver was was so apparent all night. Well, his A dot was like the length of Nick Foles. <laughs> uh, seriously. And, and that's not his fault. And when they pushed the ball down the field, he missed some throws. That's where he's culpable for whatever – his role is in this thing. Like, you know, like when, when Kansas city's late bringing pressure and I forget who he had, he had uh, likely and likely has got to get up and be more competitive, but that ball is thrown with a lot of zip, you know um, there's, you could make a better throw there. I'm not trying to nitpick because he also makes all these fucking spectacular plays. I'm not saying Lamar played great. We're not, we're not saying he played perfect, but what Nolan brought up and the thing that we've been talking about and harping on is like, they did nothing at receiver. And so Derrick Henry has to be like prime Derrick Henry. And also as Chris Collinsworth, I think pointed out, you know, they like that gun run stuff and it's hard for Derrick Henry to pick up a, a full head of steam. Right. And so, you know, it changes the things that they are able to do in the run game. And right now, I don't like the flow of the offense. It felt like the shots were like, when they got aggressive, they just tried to get big and then take shots and, and then, you know, just pepper the flats a little bit. And like, I, I just didn't think there was a lot of creativity, but it's also a group that, as we pointed out, has not gotten better outside. Their offensive line, people gloss over this shit. It's three new starters. Am I wrong? Three? Three. And the right guard, who's a massive human being, is not going to be great in space. And he was also going against, like, that's a baptism, right? But that group's going to struggle at times. And to come out there and to, you can say, hey, the Chiefs got some calls. They definitely got some calls. But also, you have to understand, it's not like tonight the Ravens were shocked that this was an emphasis. It's obvious to me that the league is like, hey, we're going to emphasize this thing. If you can remember past examples, there were times where people were like, the game's never going to be the same. And then by week six or something, you're like, wait, are they not calling that anymore? It's because they're trying to send a message. And they would have done it to both teams, I believe. Now, they let Jawan Taylor off the hook on one of his early starts, but that's been – they've been letting people do that since Jesus was a baby. Like, that's a, a thing, okay? The emphasis this year seems to be the neutral zone thing. And there are some tackles. Hey, listen, you didn't like it. Some people didn't like it. Some people were screaming at the TV. I waited all off season to see football and I'm looking at flags. I get it. But what I am saying is, as a former defensive lineman, as JJ Watt pointed out on Twitter.com, we, we enjoyed that shit a little bit. I was like, yeah, you motherfuckers have been cheating. So, Hey, listen, sloppy up front. And I'm not, Hey, I don't want to make light of this. Their O-line coach died. Okay, and he he was a, a damn good coach and had been coaching ball a long time. And that guy can be the most in, important guy in the damn building, especially when you got three new starters. So all the concerns we had about the, the Ravens, we're not hating, but they got some work to do patching up the front, figuring out who they want to be offensively, figuring out what concepts work for Lamar and this group, figuring out what 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 run concepts work for Derrick Henry. Now, the Chiefs knew there was no sucker punch in them. They were like, everybody knew they were going to come in the building and two things were going to happen. They were going to try to run the ball down their throat because they didn't do it in the AFC Championship game. And additionally, Lamar was going to run the football. Because Lamar, I think this week, I saw a quote where he was like, hey, if I was healthier, if I had my legs in the, in the, in the uh, AFC Championship, I would have run the ball. And you heard me say that. I said it inside the NFL. I wish he would have tucked it and ran more, which 
sounds ridiculous because of all the criticisms that, you know, he's such a great runner that he's had to grow up with and he gets the biggest moment in his career. And we're telling him he's got to run the ball now, but sometimes you do, you get man coverage, you got to tuck it. And I thought tonight it was apparent to me, at least on the bright side, that they're going to get Lamar involved in the run game. They, they motioned out to empty, ran quarterback power, stuff like that. That, that to me is a good sign. Now, Let's just fucking tone it down a bit. I sound like I'm giving mixed messages here, but Lamar's going to age presidentially if if that's the way they have to win. I mean, it's not it's not college football, and he he knows that. I mean, like, and by that I mean these hits add up, and that workload would probably be a record amount of carries on the ground that I think yep. he's had in an NFL season. So. And I didn't check that. It's just a, a feeling I get. I mean, he ran the ball like you bring in Derrick Henry for eight mil. And I know it was just night, but Lamar ran the ball three or four more times. Yeah. And, and you mentioned for the for the Derrick Henry um, project to work at its best for him to be prime Derrick Henry. That works best when it's 25 to 30 touches. Yeah. And you get late in the third quarter and nobody wants to tackle him anymore. Yeah. But tonight only 13. You know, it, it's it was kind of like the AFC title game where they get down one possession and all of a sudden we're going to throw the run plan out the window. By the way, the Justice Hill prop, that hit in three minutes. Easy money. I was like, bro, I've been waiting for this hit of dopamine for months. And Justice Hill gave me, you know, uh, a dose of it right off the bat. So I got that and I got the Lamar carries easy. Um, first half under hit on the nose. And then the Chiefs, obviously, with the cover. The likely thing was, like, Tariko was electric on the call. My fucking dinner was in my throat because I was like, the whole night just came down. And uh, the whole game, you felt like it's the Chiefs game. Because it was easy to see, like, that wasn't sustainable. You know, that 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 pace from Baltimore just, like, kind of – they they – they were just throwing shit at the wall, you know, and they were relying on Lamar to make magic and, and for likely to make magic. And that's a guy they got, they got to get the damn ball and they got to get him the ball in situations where he can take off running. I, that's got to be one of the centerpieces. It's almost like it's more important than getting the ball to Mark Andrews. Did you yeah. see that block he threw? Oh Mark yeah. Them, which dude? is impressive, which is damn impressive. Right. Cause yeah. you, you don't think it likely is like being, but he's trying to be physical and damn, is he tough dude? Mm -hmm. Cause they, you know, and that's a fair play, but he goes into the fucking stadium and he's on the ground and I'm like, fuck, did he break his ribs? And next thing you know, right. he's coming down with that ball and it's this close. And like I said, I knew it right away. Like I knew it on the drive that that Harbaugh was going for two. And that's what you should do in that situation. Yeah. 100%. I mean, 100%. But yeah, um, otherwise, I don't know what we didn't have. Mahomes, Mahomes will be better. You know, I said, I said Lamar didn't play his best game. Neither did uh, Patrick. I guess it was really the Ravens play, but he at least held off on an interception to not um, that was at that tip. Yeah. Not to give him field position, just out jump two dudes. Well, that was huge. And so was uh, Pacheco's run. And I'm talking about that last one where he he stays alive. He has the wherewithal to know I'm not down. His teammates have the wherewithal to know he's not down. They pick up a first down, and that's how much time. I didn't add it up, but, you know, that's the clock ran out on Baltimore. You know, that's what happened. Are you a proponent of spiking that ball after the deep shot to Bateman? Do you want Lamar to spike that and stop the clock? I'd like to get in my best play. You know, and I also think about, like, I don't know how long they were going before that without a stop. Um, is it beneficial? Defense is tired. Are your receivers gassed? You know, it's um, – I'd, I'd rather just clock it. And, fuck, Spags took that one time out, and people that, – that adds fuel to the fire that everybody's like, oh, it's fixed for Taylor Swift or something. Spags should never have called that time out. Now, he probably knows something I don't in Spags we trust. But – Baltimore might have got a, a delay in that situation had he not. So it was like the game was sloppy, period. I mean, the Chiefs, last year they played drunk at times, it looked like. Like, you know, guys were just dropping shit and there were penalties. And there was some of that tonight. But you see how different it looks? This is like somebody who's like a good drunk. Last year's Chiefs offense was like 
the fucking guy that you know around you know jack and coke number three it's going downhill and nobody wants to be around the guy and it's like every time he goes out you're like I, he's about to do it and he does it and that's what happened with the chiefs offense last year before they got sober at the end and then this year it's obviously if they're a little drunk it's still going to be exciting they're still going to be the life of the party you got the fastest fucking guy in the nfl you still have Travis Kelsey. They barely had to throw the ball to him. Um, you know, Juju damn near caught a touchdown. Uh, and they made a good point. Kingsley Suamatea, which I I don't know how Collinsworth did with the fucking pronunciation. I don't think he got it right. I missed it. He was fine. Yeah. And good job. Good job, Ojabo. Good for him. I want to shout him out, man. It's been fucking years primetime game made a big play they didn't give him a replay or anything got worked to work pretty hard to get back right just a shout out to the young corners for the chiefs too Fuck Stepped yeah. up in some big spots was it jalen watson, watson. With that swat away it was a yep. great play it was a great play and it was one that you could feel like the whole fan base being like okay you know like because i know it's a question mark i think spags does a good job with those guys in the back end he'll figure it out and uh, they also survived two guys leaving with a concussion. Like I'm right. pretty sure they were like, where are you? Kansas City, get out there. Uh, <laughs> the one, one guy I want to shout out is uh, Chennault before we go. Yep. He played really well. He showed up in some spots, man. And if it weren't for Chennault, they lose that game. Or at least they're in overtime. Well, no, do the math. The math's fucked up. But that's six down there in the red zone. Yep. Yeah, he bailed. He bailed Tranquil out. So, shout out to our boy Leo Chanel. You mentioned just the last thing you mentioned uh, the the Chiefs playing drunk earlier in the season. Uh, last year they did the same thing, right? They lost on Thursday night to the Lions. Yeah. Patrick threw a pick six in that game. They they were driving. They their last drive in that game. They uh, lost it on downs. Like same thing. So if you're in the NFL and you watch them tonight and you're like, oh well. Hey, you know, they're maybe not as good if we give them our best shot. You know, they always climb throughout the season. You know, you'll see them kind of fuck around, and then they'll always be what they need to do. They'll always be where they need to be at the end of the season. Yeah, they have they have nine lives because they have the best quarterback. Maybe, like, he's going to make – he's. I don't want to get into that. But but that's why they have so many lives. And they got Andy Reid and they got Spags. They've retained a guy who should have been a head coach a couple times over again, right? Even though the first stop didn't go well, we didn't have Chris Jones or Legereus Sneed. Okay, so uh, take it easy on Spags for the for the Rams thing. But I'll just say this um, to your point, Reed. And I think most people would watch that game and and think a little bit the opposite. I would hope and be like, oh, they're like they can score again. Like they're not going to have trouble moving the ball quickly down the field. I don't think I saw a single drive last year at times, which is a crazy fucked up statement to make, but where it was just like bang, bang, bang. They had to earn everything. There was a time in the season where it was like, golly, dude. And that's what that's why they made so many mistakes. Not just the fact that they were mistake prone, but the probability of a mistake goes up the longer you're out on the field. And if you can it's not just about getting explosives, but it's about like getting done with the drive. There's less play. And sure, you take bigger chances, but if the chance is Patrick Mahomes hitting the ball down the seam or hitting a corner route against like cover two or something, like I'll take those chances. Mm -hmm. So I fucking I feel like this team is gonna be tough again. I'm sorry uh if you think they're like the Death Star. Um in Spags we trust. One more thing. Uh Carson Steele, big reptile guy. Did not expect his front door to look like that. Front door was like mahogany. You know, I'm saying that house is like 700K at least, depending on, you know, the the, uh, the district. But, like, the appointments on that front door were way overboard compared to what I was expecting to see for a guy holding a fucking giant live alligator who lives in the house. Like, that's trailer to me every time. No offense. No and question. I would live in a fucking trailer if I could. Sometimes I feel that way. Um, but that's not where I expected Carson Steele's alligator to live at all. A, a follow-up question to that. 
So he gets gifted this gator as a as a young lad. When this guy, assuming he'd like to start a family one day, brings some young children to the picture, do you keep the hundred pound gator walking around the crib, or what? I mean, what goes on there? Uh, I don't think reptile people think about risk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So the way that's a very yeah. sensible question on this Zoom call, it's not even a thought, honestly, to people that own, right. own like boa constrictors and things like that. Those people don't care about things like that. I don't even know if they go, they go to like get checked up at the doctor. You know what I mean? I'm getting some blood right. work done tomorrow, guys, approaching 40. And on top of that, I just got to see Mr. Steel. I mean, who is the guy gifting a gator to a, a young baby boy? Dude, I'm pretty sure he's probably huge. This is exactly what uh, I, yeah. this is exactly what, yeah. oh my God. He's the new Tyson Bajan dad. <laughs> but pull him up. We'll get, zoom, enhance. I think we found Doy, dad of the year. This is Doy. Carson steals a unit. His dad might be bigger. Telltale sign of a Doy candidate. Huge dad. If you'll remember, uh, the guy from Gonzaga had a Doy. Chet. Hold no, him. not Chet. Mm -mm. Yeah, well, oh, Chet, Chet's dad. No, Chet's dad was in the. Chet's he received, dad was the. Yeah, and then he received Timmy. votes. But it was Timmy's dad. Timmy's, Timmy's dad, dad was a fucking unit of all units. Yeah, I just wanted to. That's, that's a really good point, Nolan. We need, we need to, like, the world needs to know that Carson Steele has a dad and he does not disappoint, at least from the first kid. Do, can we find anything else about him, Reed? What is his occupation? Can you ask Quora? Yeah, but, I mean, this, is, this can just be the follow-up segment for the Chiefs' next game, you know? Uh, Joseph Steele. Joseph Steele. Who are Carson Steele's parents? This is from Sportscopedia. Um don't disappoint me. What's your guess? What do you think? What do you think he does for a living? I'm going to guess that no information about him is available in this public domain. Holy shit. The guy's mysterious. <laughs> this is incredible. We need to find out. We need to find out more. Hey, Carson Steele's dad. Come on the pod. Let's talk about it. Let's hang out. Talk about owning a reptile and having a huge son. There's an article here. It says Carson Steele's 100-pound pet alligator, Crocky J, nearly killed the chief star for trying stunts. Let's see. Man's best friend right there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what, you know <laughs> when he was a kid, he had to learn, like he taught himself how to hold the alligator correctly. So yeah. he said if, like, he – the best way you grab the tail that's secured under his arm and then put on a, put a hand under its belly to control its movements. And it says any mistake, like letting your hand get too close to his head can lead to a painful bite. And Steele knows this very well as he, as he has encountered its bite. <laughs> what a euphemism for getting bit by your fucking pet. He said, but when Jeez. I, when I was younger, I was trying to show him to my friends and something happened. One of my friends moved or something, and I turned and looked the other way, and he got me a little bit. That was that was the one time. <laughs> it's only yeah. happened once. If it happens a second time, my career might be over. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> I mean, I'm sure the fucking thing's awesome. It's just I'm not a, I'm not a big reptile guy. Not a reptile guy. Never been. At all. Anyways. Big pod coming, uh, just a, a ton of football. Going to OD on football here on this podcast. We got uh, Stanford Steve, myself, uh, Dr. Fax. Going to be giving out some bets for the weekend. And got Thursday Night Time Machine. I don't know. I don't want to spoil it. I imagine, considering I hit most of my bets, that maybe I won the fucking contest tonight. But you'll have to wait and see. Um and uh, we're picking division winners, Super Bowl winners, giving out awards. Uh, don't hold us to them. Enjoy the pod.